You are looking at an egg cell which is not yet joined with a sperm. The genetic data of the sperm and the egg are side by side. But one of the greatest miracles in the world is about to happen. Two sets of genetic information are about to mix with one another to form an entirely new human being. And union has happened. This first cell is called a zygote. It may be hard to believe, but inside this cell is all the information regarding a person as yet unborn. The unborn baby's eyes, complexion and hair color, the shape of his face and all his other physical features are encoded here. And it's not just his appearance, but also his skeleton, internal organs, skin, veins, and even the shape and number of the blood cells circulating in those veins, and all the other details of his body that are determined here. Everything is determined and written in this cell. From a person's features at age seven to his features at age 70, Shortly after fertilization, the cell will perform another very surprising action. It divides and two new cells form. Then these cells divide again and become four cells. The construction of a new human being has now begun. But why does the cell decide to divide? Why does it have the task of building a new human being? Who gave the cell the knowledge to build a new person? These questions lead us to the existence of God, possessor of infinite intelligence and power, who created us, the world, the human being in that world, the cell in that human being, and the entire universe around it. At this moment, you're seeing the journey inside the fallopian tube of the constantly dividing and multiplying cell. This collection of cells is known as a morula. As the cell cluster divides and multiplies, another astonishing thing happens. Some cells start to grow different to others. The old cells gather in the center, and these are surrounded with the new cells, which are growing into a different kind of cell. A short time later, the group of cells in the center will form the embryo. In other words, the first cells of the baby to be born, and the group of cells around these will form the placenta, which will nourish the embryo. Cells beginning to grow different from one another and deciding to form the embryo or the placenta is accepted by the world of science as a great miracle. There is a secret order which makes these cells do this. About four days after fertilization, the dividing cells reach an area specially prepared for them, that is to say the mother's womb. In order not to be expelled from the body, they have to cling on to the womb. However, the newly forming embryo is a round cluster of similar cells. It has no special hook or extension to enable it to cling on anywhere. So how does it stick to the wall of the womb? This too has been taken into account. When these cells reach the wall of the mother's womb, a special system goes into operation. What you're now seeing is a cell cluster which has just reached the mother's womb, seen now under an electron microscope. The cells on the very outside give off a special enzyme which dissolves the womb wall. In this way, the cells cling tightly to the womb and avoid being expelled from the body. The presence of these cells 
which are both in the right place and which release the necessary enzyme, once more reveals the perfection of creation. Thanks to this flawless creation, the cell cluster is buried in the wall of the womb. This new living creature, which sticks to the womb and begins to grow, is now known as an embryo. This truth, discovered by modern science, revealed an important miracle of the Quran. In the Quran, God uses the term alak to refer to the first phase in the mother's womb. Read in the name of your Lord, who created. He created man from alak. Read and your Lord is most honorable. Alak, in Arabic, means a thing which holds on to somewhere. The word is even used in describing certain parasites which stick to the skin and suck blood. In other words, in the Quran, which was revealed to us at a time when man's knowledge of biology was still very limited. A word is used which exactly describes the embryo in the mother's womb. This proves once more that the Quran is the word of God.